Hi guys, welcome back. Today, we are going to talk about financial markets. To appreciate the need for financial markets, we must acknowledge the need for, for an efficient capital allocation process for the economy to prosper. In an ideal economy, capital should flow from those who have access of it to those who need it. Say a booming business, one which needs funds. If there are no more funds available, then it will lose the investment opportunities it could have taken. Such chances of expansion and growth will just go to waste. Meanwhile, on one side, say a saver, one who has excess funds, the funds of the saver will be idle if he or she cannot think of what to do with it. Without any way to transfer the capital from the saver to the business, the economy will not reach its full potential. Economic stagnation may happen. The most obvious way one can think of in the allocation of capital is through a direct transfer. Imagine that your friend is starting a business and wishes you to help her. She may just approach you or anyone she knows and borrow money or offer ownership in the business. You will gain a receivable by lending money or in the case of ownership, you will gain equity in return of the money you provide. And hence, there is a capital allocation. Though direct transfers are simple, it would not be practical to do if the business needs billions of pesos. Imagine the number of investors the owner of the business will have to approach to reach the target amount. Hence, indirect transfers may be needed. There are two types of indirect transfers. One is through an investment bank, the business needs to approach the investment bank, who would act as their underwriter. Note that investment banks are not the banks as you know it. They are not the usual banks that you know. They are called commercial banks. Investment banks are institutions that create capital for the company. They help the business create a security for issuance, like a bond or a stock. Buy those securities and sell them to investors. In this case, the security, the stock or the bond of the company, will fall to the hands of the investors. The investment bank is only a pass-through party in this transaction, profiting from the margins by selling the instrument at a higher price than how much it was bought. This is an indirect transfer through an investment bank. There is another kind of indirect transfer. We call this an indirect transfer to a financial intermediary. An example of a financial intermediary would be commercial banks. These are the banks as you know it. One where you can deposit your money if you are a saver who have excess funds or borrow money if you need to finance a purchase or a business. Savers can deposit their money to the bank and own a certificate of deposit. Businesses can borrow money from the bank, turning it into a loan receivable from the bank's point of view. Note that a separate instrument is created for the amount owed by the bank to the saver, the certificate of deposit, and the amount owed by the business to the bank, the notes receivable representing the loan. Unlike investment banks that are mere pass-throughs, financial intermediaries are active providers and receivers of capital. Thus, we are able to highlight the difference between the two. Now, let us talk about the types of markets. A market is a place where buyers and sellers meet to exchange goods with each other. This place may be physical, like a wet market, or virtual, like FB marketplace. Let us go to the different types of markets and distinguish one from its opposite. Physical asset market versus financial markets. Physical asset markets are those whose object of exchange are physical, like vegetables, meat, clothes, toys, and gadgets. Financial markets are those whose object are financial instruments. Financial instruments like stocks, bonds, and options. Spot market versus futures market. Spot markets are those that involve transactions to be consummated 
on the spot. That is, the object will be delivered now. Futures market are where buyers and sellers agree on the price now for delivery in a future specified date. This futures market is important in managing risk. Say if the object of the transaction is something that takes time to grow and is perishable, like crops or, say, corn, the futures contract is a way to lock the prices by the time the corn is going to be harvested. In this way, the farmer would no longer worry about losing when the price becomes low, nor the miller who intends to buy the corn from the farmer be worried that the corn prices would go high. Both of the two can sleep well at night knowing that the prices have already been locked. This way of managing this is what we call hedging to be explained in some future topic. Money market versus capital market. Money markets are where short-term investments are bought and sold. Examples would be treasury bills and commercial papers. Treasury bills are short-term instruments issued by the government. Commercial papers are short-term debt instruments issued by stable large companies. Both of them mature in less than a year. Hence, they are almost as equivalent as cash, thus the term money market. Capital markets are where long-term investments are bought and sold. The, mon the bond market and the stock market included as they have a maturity greater than a year or no maturity at all in the case of stocks. Primary versus secondary markets. Primary markets are where newly issued securities are sold by companies who need to raise capital. In other words, the seller is the issuer of the securities. Meanwhile, in the secondary market, transactions involved here are between one investor and the other, like one trader selling a stock to another. Here in the secondary market, the issuing company is no longer involved in the transaction. Again, it is a mere transaction between two investors. Private versus public market. Private markets are where contracts are being negotiated between two parties. Example of this would be a borrower and a lender agreeing on the terms of the loan, including interest rates and collateral. Their rights and obligations depend on what they agreed upon. Meanwhile, in the public markets, these are where standardized securities, like stocks, common stocks are being traded. The conditions of owning a stock, like voting rights, limited liability, are pretty much the same for each common stock of different companies. The terms are standardized. In our next video, we will dig deeper into the world of financial markets. We will talk about recent trends in this area, financial institutions, and the stock market. As always, until next time, like, share, and subscribe.